Yeah, my conflict of interest. I'm sponsored by the uh, National Institute for Health Research and also by Guys and St. Thomas's BRC. Uh, the other members' uh, contribution to this work are sponsored by Philips uh, and Piaget's uh, gets grant funding from Philips Healthcare. So why do we fail at our relations? We know we fail around 30% of people uh, will return with atrial fibrillation following a single procedure for AF ablation, whatever method we use, whether that's pulmonary vein isolation via a segmental approach or via a wide area approach. Is it due to impre imprecise mapping? Well, in terms of atrial fibrillation, we do know where we are meant to ablate. And so mapping in terms of uh, patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation is not a problem. However, what is a problem is inadequate lesion formation. There is a multitude of data which shows that when people return with AF following a paroxysmal uh, AF ablation, there is recurrence of uh, conduction across the pulmonary vein left atrial border. So why do we get inadequate lesions? Part of this is undoubtedly due to uh, catheter stability. It's very difficult to maintain adequate catheter contact throughout the cardiac cycle and throughout uh, RF lesion delivery. Further problem is tissue contact. Maintaining adequate tissue contact uh, is a problem. A number of solutions are being developed for this, such as pressure sensing catheters uh, and robotic and magnetic systems. But as yet, we are un unable to get uh, good catheter tissue contact throughout the entire lesion delivery. Another problem is safety margin. We all know about the problems of uh, left atrial esophageal fistula. And so simply increasing the power to try and generate an adequate lesion is not enough. Because we do not know exactly how we are relating, we do not know the depth of lesion that we are creating. And this leads on to the next point. We have no direct measure of understanding how much of a lesion we have formed. All the measures we have are indirect. We have our electrical physiological endpoints, such as uh, isolation of the vein. We can also look at electrogram diminution, to see, which we assume means that the underlying tissue is being destroyed. We can look for a drop in impedance. However, lots of work has shown that you can get a drop of impedance even by turning on the catheter and back to stay line. And we can also look at contact sensing. But all this does is tell us the contact. It does not tell us whether we are forming an adequate lesion. So what we set out to look at is to see whether tissue necrosis can be visualized in real time during the ablation. And to do this, we developed a combined radio frequency ultrasound catheter. And with this catheter, we're able to both ablate and see lesion formation with a single catheter. We developed a number of prototypes, and the two that we used for these experiments are shown here. The fundamental difference is that one is an open-ended design, and it's called a ring catheter, whereas the ultrasound does not have to pass through anything other than the irrigation fluid to get to the tissue. And another one, which is we have called the TPX catheter, which has got a fine membrane over the end of the catheter, which is able to uh, hold current, but will also allow the ultrasound waves to pass backwards and forwards so we can see the uh, changes in ultrasound contrast. Both of these prototypes were 10 French. We also developed a sheet model so that we could uh, deliver these lesions in the in vivo setting. 12 uh, Tarancé sheep were used in accordance with all the uh, ethical pro protocols in Bordeaux. Following general anesthesia, uh, 12 French sheets were introduced into the femoral vein and into the internal jugular vein to allow access to the right and uh, left atrium, and also to the right and left ventricles. In addition, a medium snotting was performed to allow epicardial lesions. In total, with the, with the 12 sheep, 112 lesions were delivered. The power output varied uh, to allow full penetration of lesions and the time delivery was between 15 and 60 seconds. 
But here is an example uh, of one we, uh, of the results from the real-time ultrasound. This is an epicardial lesion, and uh, this is the M-mode image. And as you can see, I've put the red line where the lesion starts to develop. The thick white line at the top of the picture is the TPX membrane. And then, as you can see, if you look at the left-hand side of the image, there is white going throughout the entire trace, whereas towards the right-hand side of the picture, there's a change in the ultrasound contrast, which demarcates tissue necrosis, and this is the uh, full lesion. When we uh, analyzed the pathology, which was done by four blinded independent observers, as was all the ultrasound data, uh, we can see that there was a very good correlation between uh, the ultrasound change and the changes seen uh, at pathology, especially with the necrotic area, but not with the hemorrhagic area. And this you can see at the bottom of that slide. So here is what we see in real time. So at about five seconds in, at 45 on the x-axis, the power is started. And then gradually, uh, as time progresses, you'll see a very subtle change in the ultrasound contrast, where it goes darker and darker, and reaches a plateau at about 60 seconds uh, on the x-axis, which is obviously 15 seconds into the ablation. And there, after seeing the movie, uh, you can see that if you again look at the left-hand side of the panel and look at the right-hand side, the white on the left, sorry, the uh, contrast is uniform, whereas on the right you can see that there's been a clear change, and this is due to tissue necrosis. In addition, when we're using this catheter, there are a number of other things which we can also pick up on. One is tissue contact. With the ultrasound, when we have intermittent contact, we obviously have an intermittent signal, whereas when we have a good stable contra uh, contact, this is also seen, and this is what the next slide shows. Again, we correlated this with uh, tissue impedance. You can see the changes uh, throughout the different phases of tissue contact. On the next slide, you can see uh, what happens when the catheter slips. So in this uh, example, this was on the right ventricular epicardium. And uh, again, at the beginning of the procedure, we turn on the power and there's a change in ultrasound contrast. But here at about 25 seconds, the catheter slipped. It stayed in contact with the myocardium, but was nearly at a different place. And again, the ultrasound continued to record this, and you can see a change in the tissue contrast. When we looked at the uh, pathological specimen, this is very clearly seen. You can see that there are two lesions next to each other, and we can also measure the depth. And again, when we looked at this, the change in ultrasound contrast correlated perfectly with the zone of tissue necrosis. So here are the uh, results uh, from the 112 lesions. And you can see that there is very good correlation uh, up to 5 millimeters. Beyond 5 millimeters, the uh, resolution uh, decreases and the correlation is not as good. Uh, on this graph, uh, the 95% confidence uh, limits are uh, put in the two dashed lines. And here you can see the, all the lesions which were just up to 5 millimeters, which for atrial fibrillation ablation, or left atrium, uh, thickness is around 2 to 3 millimeters for most of the posterior wall. And so a 5 millimeter depth of penetration is adequate. We are, we are working on uh, further ways to improve this technology to go beyond 5 millimeters. So here you can see the R value of 0.78. So to summarize, the predominant reason for people having recurrence of AF or a paroxysmal AF ablation is due to lesion recurrence. Current technology only uses indirect measures to measure lesion formation. And we developed a novel combined ultrasound and radio frequency capture so we can see in real time lesion development. This is the first time that lesion development can actually be seen. This capture is able to see uh, lesions develop up to five millimeters 
we are measuring changes in uh, the contrast of the tissue which correlates with tissue necrosis and not with tissue hemorrhage. We can also measure tissue contact and we can see when the catheter slips throughout the contact cycle during ablations. And so in, sum uh, in summary, this catheter may allow us to form better lesions, more contiguous lesions, and hopefully reduce recurrence of AF. Thank you.